on the right side, northwest 1068. That was 121 runway 119. 591 is the last one for 11, so continental. Uh, Morning tower. 591 does a turn to final visual 11 right. You made 591 Minneapolis, start good land, runway 11 right, switch it up. Clear to land at 591. On the inside. Going visual. One hundred feet. Fifty. Thirty. Ten. Thrust reverser operation. A critical phase of the landing procedure. Versus normal. Sixty knots. Reverse stowed. Each operator has its own procedures for the correct application of reverse thrust for its various aircraft and runway conditions. Thrust reversers are most effective when deployed at recommended ground speeds. At slower than recommended ground speeds, the braking power of the reversers is significantly reduced, and it is then that the risk of foreign object damage and erosion of engine components increases significantly. Some airlines have been experiencing serious problems due to the improper application of reverse thrust. This program is an effort to alleviate that situation. Thrust reversers redirect airflow at a forward angle. The diverted airflow stirs up sand or debris that may be on the runway. When the reversers are still deployed at slow ground speeds or high power settings, debris can be blown far enough forward to be ingested into the engine, causing engine damage. In some cases, re-ingestion causes dust in the cabin, which sets off smoke alarms and upsets passengers. Just the other day we had an instance where a 757 landed and on landing roll he reported smoke in the uh, cabin and uh, evidently the smoke in the cabin was caused by the improper use of the thrust reversers and subsequently we called out the emergency crew, the emergency crew came out, the passengers were uh, alerted and were quite worried what was going on. So on, from the control tower standpoint the improper use of the thrust reversers can be a real problem for us also. This chalk test shows the path of re-ingested particles that occurs when the reversers are still deployed at low ground speeds. It is this type of re-ingestion of runway debris that causes dust in the cabin and engine erosion or FOD. My name is Jim Harris. I'm a development engineer in the Pratt Whitney Engineering Department. The ingested material causes damage to all components of the engine. I will show a comparison of the service run and new hardware to show the extent of the erosion and foreign object damage. The, the fan splitter and exit case struts show the impact of the particles by removing of the protective coating. The removing of the protective coating exposes 
the material fibers. This erosion was so bad that we had to design a steel protective shield to prevent the wear on the leading edge. The high compressor experiences erosion damage throughout every stage. The front high compressor blades show leading edge damage that looks like a sawtooth caused by the impact of the particles. The blade also shows leading edge and trailing edge thinning at the tip. Now this thinning at the tip is seen throughout every stage in the high compressor at varying rates dependent on the location in the high compressor. Erosion on the outer air seals is primarily driven by impact of the ingested particles. The outer air seals, composed of rubber, felt metal, or ceramic layers, is smooth in the new condition. The erosion roughens the surface and removes material and it can get to the point where the rub strip is completely down to the base metal. The seal erosion leads to increased clearances at the blade tip resulting in loss of engine performance, stability margin, and EGT margin. The erosion of the engine does not stop at the exit to the high compressor. The ingested particles are reduced in size by the action of the compressor, but continue downstream to plug the first turbine vane. The plugging of the cooling holes results in a higher temperature on the outer skin, resulting in surface damage, forcing premature removal of the hardware. The damage to the engine components leads to poor engine performance, unscheduled shop visits, and increased maintenance cost. The advanced deterioration of engine performance leads to premature removal from the aircraft. The shop workload cannot be accurately projected or effectively planned because of these unscheduled visits. The maintenance cost increased dramatically because the compressor and turbine require replacement parts. The airfoils are normally damaged beyond repair limits and require 100% scrappage. This high scrappage rate leads to a large inventory to maintain the airline's fleet. As you'll see from this chart, the effects of thrust reverser operation are directly related to the method of application. Incorrect thrust reverser operation can result in high compressor erosion resulting in replacement at 3,000 hours. It can also cause severe vein cooling hole plugging. And severe high turbine ceramic duct segment wear. Five hundred feet, plus five. Approaching minimums. Runway in sight. I have the lights, I have the runway. Two hundred feet to touch down, plus five.
100 feet. 50. 30. 10. Versus normal. Eighty knots. Sixty knots. Versus stowed. Five hundred feet. Four hundred feet. Three hundred feet approaching minimums. I have the approach lights. I have the runway. There's minimums. Runway in sight. One hundred feet. Fifty feet. Thirty feet. Ten feet. Eighty knots, I have the airplane. Sixty knots. We've just demonstrated to you in our cockpit procedure trainer two landing uh, rollouts and reversing technique, one with the captain landing and one with the first officer landing and giving control to the captain, the captain taking control 80 knots. It's extremely important that we follow these uh, reversing procedures exactly because uh, if we are in reverse below 60 knots, we are picking up sand, ice, and all kinds of foreign objects into the engines causing uh, unnecessary uh, wear and tear on our engines, increasing fuel flow, and increasing t operating temperatures in our engines. In addition to the wear and tear on the engines, you can bring the sand into the air conditioning system and further into the cabin, setting off the smoke detectors and causing undue alarm in the cabin. When the first officer makes the landing, the captain will make the 80 knot call and then state, I have the airplane. At that time, the first officer will relinquish control of the airplane to the captain, and the first officer will make the 60-knot call. It's important for the first officer to wait for the captain to say, I have the aircraft. Otherwise, you might be transferring control of the aircraft when he's not ready for it. We've just demonstrated these reversing procedures in our 757 cockpit procedure trainer. However, it's important that each of you follow the particular procedures for your type airplane.